Hello all, my name is Ian Brattell and I'm a third year PhD student in the Bernie Group at Emble EBI in Cambridge. Our group has used nanopore DNA sequencing to uncover dark variation and its potential functional consequences in our model organism of choice, the Madaka. The Madaka is a small Japanese rice paddy fish which has a number of favourable traits in addition to a special one, a trait that, to our knowledge, is unique among vertebrates and that is that wild madaka are resilient to inbreeding, which allows one to take a wild population and from it create a set of near-isogenic inbred lines, where the individuals within each line have near-identical genomes to one another. And this is extremely useful for exploring how genes interact with the environment to create complex traits in natural populations. Our group, in collaboration with the Wittbrock Group at Koss Heidelberg and the Loosely Group at KIT, have taken advantage of this unique resilience to inbreeding to establish the Madaka Inbred Kiyosu Karlskloe Panel, also known as the MIC Panel, which comprises 80 near isogenic lines that have been bred from a wild population near Kiyosu in southern Japan and is currently housed at KIT in Karlskloe, Germany. We want to understand the nature of structural variation in the MIC Panel because it may have important functional consequences for the complex traits that we study. So we first applied the traditional reference anchored approach of mapping SVs by taking 12 MIC panel lines, sequencing them with Promethean, aligning them to the standard Madaka HDRR reference, and then for nine of those lines, calling SVs and polishing the deletions and insertions with high coverage Illumina short reads. Here we have the log 10 links and counts of all the called deletions and insertions. And you can see that the polishing process removed insertions over 10 KB in length, as well as adjusting the breakpoints for around three quarters of the variance, which highlights the utility of this combined long and short read approach if mapping accuracy is paramount. Here are the links and counts of duplications and inversions as well. And to view the distribution of these SVs across the genome, we created these circos plots, here showing deletions and duplications, where the circumference represents the 24 chromosomes in the Madaka genome, the rings represent each of the nine lines, and the lengths of the radial lines represent the lengths of the SVs at those loci. There are two things to note here. The first is that many longer SVs are enriched on chromosomes 2 and 18, which both have high repeat content. The second is that most longer SVs are shared by all nine MIC panel lines, which suggests that these SVs are not individual variants, but rather they are regions where the MIC panel sequence diverges greatly from the HDRR reference. To explore this further, we constructed a pan-genome graph assembly by combining three high-quality Madaka reference genomes, HDRR, HNI, and HSOC, with de novo individual assemblies that we constructed for each of the 12 nanopore sequenced MIC panel lines. We successively combined these assemblies into a single pan-genome graph, starting with HDRR and then adding the other reference genomes and finally the individual MIC assemblies. Here we have an example section of the graph assembly with the standard HDRR reference in blue, divergent segments for HNI and HSOC in orange and green, and then in red, the segments that are specific to the MIC panel. You can see that most segments align to the standard HDRR reference, but a substantial proportion is specific to the MIC panel, and of those segments, a large proportion is unique to a single MIC line. And here you can see that this pattern is generally consistent across all 12 lines. To determine whether these highly divergent sequences might have functional consequences, we show two examples here where we took RNA-seq reads from 50 MIC panel lines, where red indicates high expression, and aligned them to either the main HDRR reference path in the graph or to the alternative path. And you can see that when we match the coordinates to the gene annotations for HDRR, they show very different RNA-seq profiles based on which alignment was used. And here we show how large deletions in the MIC panel have completely substituted entire genes with as yet unannotated sequence. And this is likely to show functional differences in the MIC panel compared to HDRR. This leaves us with plenty to explore, but it shows the benefits of using a graph-based approach to map large structural variation with important implications for understanding the biology. And this is all made possible by long read technology. Finally, we used nanopore DNA sequencing to identify around 4,500 loci that were differentially methylated across the 12 MIC panel samples. We found that the differentially methylated CPG islands clustered by sibling lines, 
showing that the methylation patterns are heritable across multiple generations. We also found that they were enriched at the ends of the chromosomes. And here we show an example of one of the most differentially methylated CPG islands, with a clear split in methylation levels at that locus across the 12 samples. We intend to soon identify more MQTLs across the entire panel. And with that, I'd like to thank the three groups involved, and in particular the individuals who contributed the most to this work, namely Adrian Leisure, Jack Monaghan, Ewan Burney, and Tom Fitzgerald. All formerly of the Burney Group, although sadly for us, Adrian has now joined the good folks here at ONT. Thank you for your attention.